Hey everybody, Preston Polder here with Pocket Jack Comics, and I'm actually going to do a follow-up to my last video about this comic book, Little Bird, because uh, I got in a discussion with a friend of mine who's arguing it's actually far more <clears throat> revolutionary propaganda-y than I had originally thought. So, we're going to go back over the plot, uh, spoiler alert, although probably most of the people listening to this video are not going to go out and buy the comic. Anyway. So, it, it takes... Alright, so we have the United States, which has become a theocracy. We've changed the American flag to now have a cross. And it's being ruled by this brutal, merciless bishop who literally bathes in blood. Um, I'm, I'm guessing... The, it, you don't have to go too far of a stretch to go, hmm, Donald Trump is probably not the writer's president. Uh, in fact, he is Canadian, and the Canadians are virtuous, actually. They are, so we, the story starts in this Native American tribe in Canada, and this young member of the tribe is given some paper, which seems kind of unusual, because that's not really traditionally the Native American thing, you know, like they, they think they call it. I forget what they called that back when I was reading... Uh, one of those titles <laughs> back in middle school, I think it called like White Leaf or something. Anyway, but uh, he's given this paper to go and take to um, this prisoner, so he has to venture forth. And so we've got this insane asylum, and every white person you see in this comic book is either insane or evil, including the guy who is basically sent out to be rescued. I mean, that is the most noble and sympathetic of all the white people you meet. Everybody else is just bad, bad, bad to the bone. I um, you know, we've got the guy who bathes in blood, and all the religious figures are absolutely grotesque. They're these little religious cherubs that are, are actually murder bots. They will, they will, you know, they are little security robots which will attempt to murder you uh, upon command. And... Uh, the, like, the bishop is talking with, like, the head mother or something, and she's this absolutely grotesque portrayal of a woman. And uh, white people are... And, all right, so then we get to the place where the big white guy, who's basically a Paul Bunyan figure, they call him the axe, you get him an axe, you can chop up anything, um, is being kept. And, and, it, and it's an insane asylum. It's really not a prison. Because the character, the little native little bird, uh, drags this massive axe down the hallway, and no one pays any attention because they're insane people pissing on the wall and somebody else babbling about it, and nobody really cares. Meanwhile, the warden of this place has lost his cybernetic arm because it was somehow stolen by Little Bird, who dressed up in a wolf pelt, but that, that element of the plot doesn't make a ton of sense. But really the message, the overall theme, is the little bird has to get the message to the axe. And then we find out, and then, you know, the warden captures little bird right in front of um, the axe's prison cell. And is going to kill, you know, little bird in this act of sadism. Because again, white people are evil. But the axe punches through the glass and says, I could have freed myself any time. So he was just being apathetic, just sitting there on his own. Um, because I guess, you know, like, the world wasn't worth fighting for. And, and it says, by the way, you know, it says the plan was, the Native American plan was they had to stop the United States in order to free the world. And, um, in order to do that, we had to get this message to this Canadian Paul Bunyan character who, you know, and then, of course, the Native American person gets shot by the warden, and that is what finally motivates the axe to to take up arms and considering destroying the U.S. How can you doubt that? Like, how do you, so, how do you not believe um, that? It's pretty overtly anti-American, obviously. Um, in terms of the theme, a friend of mine is saying, like, look, clearly we're kind of taking white people as a group and saying they're all crazy, and some of them are absolutely fascist, and then there's other people, the good, ordinary, working people, who are just taking part in this insane asylum and just getting by. But they could free themselves if they wanted to. All they got to do 
is get violent and start killing folks. And uh, meanwhile, it is a you know a minority, a Native American in this case, who has to bring them that message. And of course, this comic is written by a white person because, of course, it is right. So um, it could be viewed as a call for revolution that white people need to wake up to the fact that <laughs> essentially the vast majority of their race is evil and fascist and that Christianity is evil and that um, essentially it is up to the other, the good white people to rebel. And meanwhile, like I saw this, this post just came in just today off of Bounding Into Comics about a woman who writes for The Guardian and Rolling Stone calling for white genocide. And saying, she says in, in, in a tweet there, that um, you have to choose between being human and being white. But so, these are the streams that uh, I believe this writer is swimming in. And given current events, I, I do think that Little Bird is probably a subtle call for violent action. So, But hey, maybe I got it wrong. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'm also doing right now... Uh, my own comic book is up on Kickstarter. It's about the two deadliest female fighter pilots in world history. They did fly for the Soviet Union, but I'm not a communist sympathizer, I promise. So there's a link for that down below. Uh, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, please like, share it with your friends, and subscribe. Take care. Bye.